Good morning, fellow tarot fans. How are you all doing? So today I'm going to talk about tarot spreads and specifically an easy and useful tarot spread you can try out if you are new to tarot. Well, there are many great spreads out there that include 10 or more cards, complexity doesn't always translate to a more meaningful reading. As a reader, you can get a whole lot of information from each individual card, and for most questions, a simple three-card reading often provides the best answers. So today I'm going to share with you how a simple past, present, future reading works and how you can incorporate this spread into your tarot practice. So let's jump into it. Before we get started, I wanted to spend a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Debris Tarot. They have a great website that offers a bunch of different tarot decks, and they were kind enough to send me this deck, the Angels Tarot, um, which I'll be using for this video and to show you how this tarot spread works. And it's a really gorgeous deck. I'm a sucker for metallic details, and I love that this deck has both kind of blue metallic details as well as gold metallic details. And it's based on a traditional Rider weight system, which is what I usually prefer to work with. I find that if you are new to tarot, picking a deck that is, you know, based on classic Rider weight symbolism can often be the easiest way to get comfortable with the cards and their meanings. I'll leave the link for their website down below if you'd like to check out this deck or one of their other decks. The Past, Present, Future spread is probably one of the most popular spreads out there and it's just really versatile and it can work with most questions that you might want to ask. In this spread, the first card represents the past and will show you something that has already occurred in your life but might still be affecting your present. Now, the second card is, of course, the present card, and it shows you a piece of guidance that you can take into your life right now. And the third card is, you guessed it, the future card. And this card shows something that might be coming into your life in the near future. Before we flip over the cards and do an example reading, I wanted to address the issue of reversals. So some readers tend to shuffle their cards go fish style, and that means sometimes a card will appear upside down in their reading. And then their interpretation of that card may be changed based on if it appears reversed or upright. Now, do you have to do reversals in your reading? Definitely not. I personally choose not to read reversals, and that's because I believe that there is a positive and a negative aspect in each tarot card, and I like to use my intuition to determine which direction I'm going to take the interpretation in, though it's totally up to you if you do choose to read reversals. To avoid having a card kind of show up upside down in my reading, I do a classic bridge shuffle when I do shuffle my cards to ensure that that's not going to happen. Another thing I like to do with my readings is focus on one card at a time instead of flipping all of the cards over at once. That way I don't get distracted by all the cards on the table or feel kind of overwhelmed by all the information coming in at once. So let's do an example reading so I can show you how the past, present, future spread works. First, we need to pick a question. So for this example, say the question is, where is my relationship heading? And one of the things that you might want to do even before you start shuffling or laying out the cards is spend a few minutes really kind of quieting your mind and concentrating on the question at hand. When you feel that your mind is fully settled and you're ready to go, then it's time to go ahead and shuffle and lay out your three cards. So let's flip over our first card. This one is again gonna represent the past and let's see what we get. Ooh, the Five of Cups. We are starting kind of dark here. <laughs> so the first thing I like to do even before I begin interpreting is I like to first notice how this card makes me feel. So looking at this image, are there any words or visuals or sensations that come to your mind? 
Once you've allowed your intuition to kind of provide you with some initial insights, next you can use your logical mind to interpret the card based on its traditional meaning and how that meaning really kind of fits the question of the reading. So this card here, it represents grief and potentially even depression for past traumatic events and relationships that have fallen apart. As this card is in the past position, it indicates that you've been through a lot and perhaps still haven't fully recovered. These feelings are still very present in your life and before you can fully commit to your current relationship, you need to first move on and accept these past losses. Even in a dark card like this, there is still a ray of hope. Three cups have fallen, um, and you can see that the figure is looking towards them, fully absorbed in really only what has been lost. But there are two full cups behind him and a sun rising in the distance here. Um, so, you know, you kind of get the idea that once you are able to move on from this past, you will be able to fully embrace the relationship currently in your life. So that's a really interesting card to start out with. Next, we're moving on to our present card. So this card will give us a piece of wisdom we can incorporate into our life and our relationship right now. Let's see what we get. Ooh, looks like we get the Seven of Cups. This is a really interesting card to get for this reading and there's a lot going on in this image. Again, first ask your intuitive self how this card makes you feel and if a specific symbol in this image might be capturing your attention. The first thing I noticed is that the figure and all of these objects are up in the clouds and that many of the symbols are very fantastical and that kind of indicates a key aspect of this card's meaning. This card shows that your head is in the clouds and you're probably spending too much time daydreaming about what you want your relationship to be. You're probably not thinking very realistically and you know that could mean you and your partner really might not be on the same page when it comes to your future. The advice I think this card is giving us is to stop fantasizing so much about an unrealistic future and focus instead on what's good and enjoyable in the here and now. So we have our last card and this card is going to represent the future. Let's see what we get. Ooh, the strength card ending on a good note here. So this card is really a great one to get in the future position and it indicates that you will be developing an inner strength and determination that will allow you to kind of better face future issues that might be coming your way. And I kind of think that this card isn't so much about your relationship specifically, but kind of more how you personally will be better able to handle kind of relationship issues that will be occurring. This card tells us that we have the strength kind of within us to overcome any fears or big challenges. So what do you do once you flipped over all three cards and interpreted their meaning? After you've kind of reviewed them all, I like to look at all three together and see if there are any additional connections between them. And one of the first things I noticed is we did get two cups cards. Now cups is the suit associated with emotions and relationships, so it makes sense that it would appear in this reading. We also got one major arcana card. One major makes sense for a three card reading, but if you were to get like two or three major arcana cards, that might indicate that there are like really big seismic shifts going on in your life. Another thing I noticed is that two of the figures are turned away, um, but in the card in the future position, the figure is facing us, suggesting that in the future, we will kind of like no longer be able to hide from our issues, but will instead strongly face them head on. So that is how I would quickly do a past, present, future reading. Now normally I would be spending a lot more time on the individual cards and looking at them all together, but I just wanted to show you a quick example. Next I want to hear from you guys. Uh, do you ever do past, present, future spreads in your practice? 
what spreads do you like to do the most often in your own tarot journey? So definitely put your details in the comments below. I love to hear all your thoughts about tarot. And if you didn't know, I actually make a living by doing tarot readings and lessons. If you are interested in getting a reading or a lesson with me, I'll leave the link down below. I do them one-on-one -on -one through Zoom or Skype. So, uh, you know, definitely check that out if you're interested. And thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.